on angels and demons, lecture number nine. And tonight we're just going to kind of wrap things up and look at the action and the activity of the, of, uh, the devil and his angels with respect to um, uh, how we interface with them, how they uh, come out against us. And I want to start off by saying this. Um, the first, the, the person who wrote uh, Colossians chapter 2, describing that Jesus spoiled, completely defeated principalities and powers in darkness, spiritual wickedness, uh, principalities and powers and spiritual authorities, and led them in an open display of their defeat, also wrote that we wrestle against these spiritual wickedness, these principalities, uh, these authorities, these rulers of darkness in this world, and spiritual wickedness. So I want to kind of break some of that down tonight. I want to show you a little bit of the interface that's going on, because it's like, you know, people say, I, I people say all the time, and, and I appreciate what they're, where they're coming from, but I would like to see them walk in a greater authority over the powers of darkness, in a greater authority over demon spirits. They say, oh, well, you know, uh, Satan is a lion, with all of his teeth pulled out. Well, where does it say that in the Bible? Rather, it says that Satan goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may gum to death. doesn't say that. He goes as a, about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You cannot devour anything without teeth. Hello. So <laughs> people need to kind of get their doctrinal ideas fully you know, corrected and, and understood so that they can effectively you know, do spiritual warfare. And, you know, we, we certainly understand that fleshly lusts war against the soul and that, uh, that the Lord has called us to be soldiers and calls us soldiers and says no soldier entangles, that goes to war entangles himself with the affairs of this life. And so Father has given us authority um, to destroy to seek out and destroy. I mean, Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. He did an excellent job. He said uh, that when he was lifted up, the prince of this world would be cast out. He was within the framework of the uh, judgment. I go free right now, the devil with all of his angels, all the demon hordes of spirits that we've been talking about. And we have to confront them, and we do confront them, and we confront them on a number of different levels. We have authority to cast them out, to tread upon scorpions and serpents, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing can be by any means hurt us. And so, you know, I'll come back to the whole thing with respect to the warfare. Be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might, taking yourself the whole armor of God, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against these principalities. Now think about this. It's wrestling. In wrestling, no one usually dies. And then nice, okay? So we're not in any other kind of a combat other than we are now coming up against them. They're rebellious. Uh, they're unwilling to listen. A human against an angel has is no match. They would beat us every time. But we've been given an authority to enter into a conflict with them that is likened unto wrestling where you throw each other around. And God in Christ Jesus has made us stronger so we're going to get them pinned, okay, uh, to go all the way with all the expressions of wrestling. Sometime I need to do that. I need to take out, you know, the book and basically say, okay, here are all of the dimensions, if you want to go full scale with this, of uh, the different wrestling holes and different wrestling throws that was there in the Greek and Roman world in which Paul was speaking from and kind of look at it from a different perspective. Um, and I know that when the Lord's talking about the whole armor, he's now talking about sword and shield, but that's not really wrestling, okay? That's fighting at another left. That's a, a level. That's a death battle. Um, and reality, the engaging is purely and specifically wrestling, and these other items of the sword and the shield are, are spiritual types of authority that we have. So I just want to say to encourage you, yeah, you're up against some angels greater in might and power than you are, but the Lord has already won the battle, but yet we still have to engage. And so I want to look at how, for example, the Paul, Apostle Paul engaged. So I'm not just talking, you know, just out of philosophy or 
a concept or personal experience, which I'm afraid that too many people do. Too many people make sermons that way. Too many people try to understand God and the things of the Spirit that way. Don't do that. Let's get an idea from the Scripture. Let's understand the actual examples of the Word of God and then from that move forward in uh, the revelation that only the Holy Ghost can give. So uh, Paul said that a messenger of Satan, and then, so we're talking about an angel of Satan, one of, not, a, not a demon, but one of the angels under the authority, one of those organized within the framework of the principalities and the framework of the uh, spiritual darkness uh, uh, order, if you would, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, uh, w- uh, was sent to him and said, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation that I had received, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, which he called, the, w- uh, uh, which is the messenger Satan, which he called a thorn in the flesh, uh, a continual aggravation. You know, it, you know a thorn's not going to kill you, but it certainly does aggravate you all the time. Are you with me? Okay. So there's no death threat here. It just, there's, a, there's and he tells uh, what the messenger of Satan did. He was constantly stirring things up against uh, Paul. And really, you could say, stopping his success. And that is the undertones there. Stopping his notoriety. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Paul was not a very well-liked person. And you can tell by the things that he said, for example, in his discussions with the church at Corinth and other places. Um, they, they didn't, there was other people that looked a lot better um, a, as a leader than what Paul would have been presented as, and especially now that he's got this messenger of Satan or this angel of Satan who's buffeting him, and it isn't causing sicknesses or diseases because he makes it very clear what that means. It's really uh, smashing, slapping, hitting, um, that's what buffet means, uh, you know, to whip. And uh, you could see how that was actually being played out through men as they stoned him, as they beat him, as they rejected him, as it was constantly being a riot stirred up against this guy, okay? He was the guy walking around who always had a target. He said, lest I should be exalted above measure, for this thing I besought the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And the Lord said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving him, okay? So... An, an angel of Satan can run interference with a, a person's ministry, and um, it is allowed by God, and usually it should be within the framework of this context, and I, I can imagine some other context in which it would be. However, what I do want to point out is that Satan and his angels are very active, even against those who have authority over them. Paul, I mean, look at how many demons that guy cast out. I mean, he, they, you take a handkerchief or apron from his body. If it was laid upon someone who was sick or diseased or had, you know, demon spirits tormenting them, harassing them, possessing them, however it may have, however it may have been, uh, he had total authority over them. Just a, a, a claw from off his body, and the devils would part, depart. Are you with me? So understand, there's not a contradiction here. And, and so that's why it's important for me to set this up. He has still just as much authority over demon spirits as, as he ever did in, in the full revelation of the ministry of Jesus. You could almost say he had as much authority over demon spirits as Jesus did because he had the Jesus ministry. And yet, it was allowed, God allowed Satan, an angel, uh, an angel from Satan, to resist him, to come out against him, to uh, do the things that he then goes on to describe after verse 7 in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, if you'd like to look at that a little closer. So then another time, Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 2, 18, he said, Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again. There's several times I was trying to come, but trying to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Okay? Satan got in the way. The powers of darkness resisted us. Once again, Father allowed it. It's within the framework of the conflict, but, say, but certainly Paul knows something about dealing with hindering spirits. Paul knows something about dealing with, with uh, angels of darkness that can come and even stop the mighty authority that had been given him or at least hinder the mighty authority that had been given him in Jesus Christ, okay? In 1 Corinthians 12, 39, 
He said, um, I think it's 2 Corinthians, I fought with beasts at Ephesus. Uh, once again, he's describing the conflict that he went in with the, into with the spiritual wickedness that existed there at Ephesus. Remember, Ephesus was the center of the worship of the goddess Diana. And so, and he, by almost, it could say, single-handedly, by the power of God, brought down that whole framework and system of worship as he preached the gospel there. And boy, did he ever have lots of conflict and lots of things that he went up against. You talk about bearing a cross. You talk about suffering uh, for Christ Jesus. You talk, talk about the intensity of tribulation. Paul went through it at Ephesus. Um, now, then here we go again second, uh, in 2 Timothy 4, 17 through 18. Paul says, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known and all the Gentiles might hear. And I, and, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Of course, he's certainly referring to Satan. Um, look at how Satan came out against the Lord Jesus. That's an example. Uh, both uh, in the situation in which he was there in the wilderness before the start of his ministry and then in the garden at the end of the ministry. Jesus was in such conflict with Satan. He was so exhausted from the conflict he was dealing with with Satan that the angels came and ministered to him and, 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 and strengthened him. Okay, think about that, people. We don't know. By and large, the average believer out there doesn't know anything. I think that one of the, uh, uh, about this rather, I think one of the most important things that I want to begin to talk to you about here is to make you aware of, wait a second, there is more for us to engage in. Are we willing to engage? And second of all, uh, I want to make sure it's very, very clear to all those people who think that Satan somehow has lost his power. Well, if Satan's lost his power, why aren't you living free from sin? If Satan lost his power, why aren't you doing more to see more souls come into the kingdom? Satan has lost his power, and many times, basically, he's keeping most people completely under wraps and in chains because whatever you have overcome by, uh, then you are the servant of whatever overcame you. And so people are being overcome by stuff all the time that are wrapping them in chains by the powers of darkness. Satan wants to stop the anointing. He doesn't really care too much about you. He just wants to destroy you. Bigger thing he's most concerned about is you laying hold of the anointing and the power of God because he's ruined. His strongholds are busted. His powers are broken. His structure is completely broken down. His minions are just are, are, are scattered. And so let's grab a hold of this and understand it. So let me just say this. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Once again, he's not talking about men only. He's talking about, by and large, the author of every evil work, every device of Satan that's come out against him, and will preserve me into the heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And then, um, uh, then the Lord Jesus addresses uh, this also uh, to the church and says in Revelation 2.10, it says, Fear not, none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil, he's identifying Satan, Diabolos, not a demon, Satan, Diabolos, the chief, okay, of demons and of angels, shall cast some of you into prison. He has the power, Satan can have the power to afflict and to, once again, uh, stop people on this on this level and whether he's stirring up men and it's doing it through the action and activity of men as it was done with the apostle Peter how many times was he thrown in prison and the Lord busted him out I mean come on okay James was thrown in prison but he got killed um, with a sword all the Lord the Lord decides okay and he says that you may be tried and you shall have tribulation ten days be faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. The Lord says, you're going to go into prison. You're going to, get, you're going to have tribulation. It could be that they were being tormented, tortured. And that, look, guys, some of you are going to die. Maybe all of them. Just be faithful to death. You'll get a crown of life. Don't worry about it. Something bigger is going on. You're going to be my martyrs. You're going to suffer for my name's sake. What is that going to do? That's going to change the tide. That's going to change the dynamic spiritually uh, within the framework of, of the spiritual dynamics as well as within the framework of of uh, the structures of men. Okay? Then let's look at another one. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. 
that he may sift you as wheat. And that means he wants to prove that you're chaff. That's what he's saying. He wants to prove to you chaff, that you're chaff, and have you destroyed like chaff. Jesus says, I've prayed for you. This is the intercession of Jesus. It's still going on right now. Jesus sees, once again, as his intercessory role as a high priest, he sees the things that Satan would do to try, you know, in, in, in any places that he may have an advantage over us because of places that we're not walking in submission to God. And then it may even be beyond that. But the bottom line of it is, it's certainly in that context where Satan can get an advantage. And not, we're not supposed to be ignorant of his devices. And we're supposed to understand how that certain doors opened up unto him in our life that haven't been fully closed can ultimately result in our ruin. And that's why the Lord Paul said, don't be careful what you do with a novice. Don't put a novice in too high of a position because he'll fall in the snare and condemnation of the devil. In other words, there are things still within his life. He needs to mature. He needs to grow out of it. As you grow up, you humble, you, you grow into humility and brokenness. And that's going to be a defense and a closed door and a locked door against a particular area in which Satan would be able to access a person then and overthrow their faith, as is described in that verse of Scripture. And so the Lord says, I prayed for you that your faith will not fail you, and when you are converted. I mean, that's a pretty, pretty powerful word, you know. I mean, it went pretty, and, and we, saw the, we saw how that played out. Uh, we saw how that the powers of darkness so overran um, Peter in those final hours of Jesus' life before his death. And you can remember also <laughs> when Peter's basically wanting to have it his way and Jesus is telling him uh, how he's gonna, that he's going to die, that he's not going to be exalted, be made king, and, and fulfill all their ideas about the Messiah. And now Peter's going to harp in, uh, jump in there, and he's going to say, no, not so, Lord. And, 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 and Jesus is going to address them just like he's addressed the devil. It says, get behind me, Satan. You are in league with and are holding on to those things which belong to men and not to God and showing a very close link and close tie between the popular opinion of religion and Satan. How much more the popular opinion of men and Satan, okay? And, of course, I broke some of that down for you already in these series of lectures, and so I won't go back through it. You've got to watch out for what everybody likes. You've got to watch out for what culture dictates. You've got to watch out for what everybody says you've got to do to be successful. That's what, that kind of world that we've lived in. No, God has described his kingdom in a very different way. We've got to understand that these other things, these cultural things, these things of religion and secular, of men, really are just simply products of the, of the inspiration and influence of Satan. Okay? Now, James addresses it at two here again. He says, Resist, he says, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. Okay, Satan's going to come at you if you don't believe. This is Diablos. He's coming at you. It's not just his demons, not just his minions. He's coming at you. Resist, submit to God. That's the strength. Once again, very similar to what the Apostle Paul said. Be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. Same thing. Submit yourself to God. That's the only way you're going to be able to be effective. You've got to be willing to step over into this realm where the Holy Spirit has control, where you're under the power, the influence, the Spirit of the Lord. And then you resist the devil within the framework of being strong, the strength of the Lord, and the power of might, his might, and he's going to flee. You're going to win. God has guaranteed us a win every time. He has not told us in any way that somehow we are immune or freed from any kind of attacks of Satan, his angels, and demon spirits. Simply has not said that at all. Okay? I hope this is helping you to understand why sometimes you've got to go through things, and it's wrestling masses, matches sometimes with sickness. It's wrestling matches sometimes with pain. It's re wrestling matches sometimes with... Uh, you know, with the, with the things that you know are the will of God and you're in pursuit of it to build a church, uh, to, to go to a nation, to be involved in some kind of ministry, and you're in, a mig, in the midst of a re wrestling match. Don't be faint-hearted. Submit to God. Resist the devil. Stand fast. 
don't give up you know don't be a wimp go buy yourself a, a, a new spine to sell them on sale at Walmart well, on sale at Walmart and 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 go ahead and stand up against the powers of darkness obviously you don't have to go to Walmart father's made it available strength of the Lord and the power of his might it's just that too many people just wimp out they like immediately start thinking somehow God's not for them is against them this must not be God's will are you kidding me you're going to be resisted there are going to be powers of darkness that are going to try to stop you both in the framework of the re arena of sin as well as in the arena of just trying to stop the flow of what God has purposed for you to do don't don't let up don't give up okay just grow up amen and stands and and having done all to stand as Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6 uh, in the midst of this conflict having done all to stand stand because sometimes it is you're in a wrestling match maybe you don't know you're in the wrestling match it's wonderful when you say go and immediately all hell flees away in terror but you know what there are times you say go and nothing happens there's time you say you, you, you take a stand that the authority that God has given and you're just met with all kinds of resistance. Well, don't change your heart, your mind, your attitude or your stance. Having done all stand, stand, you are going to win here. You will continue to win. You are more than a conqueror, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. There's times where you're going to wrestle. There's times it's going to be major conflict. And even on the scale of some of the things that I just described that went through, that took place with the Apostle Paul and also that happened as Jesus described to the churches in, in, in the book of Revelation. So Romans 16, 20, here we love this. And God, the God of peace shall crush Satan under your feet very soon. Well, we want very soon to already be already, okay? We want very soon to be as soon as we say it. We don't want to have to wait a day, an hour, a day, a week, a month, a year, especially a year. The Lord says you're going to win. Just stand fast once again, and you're going to crush Satan. Once again, he's crushed, but you're going to crush him too. He's defeated, but you're going to defeat him too. huh? Jesus already won, but you're going to win within that framework of what Christ Jesus won. And that's the way the Lord has designed it. That's the way it is. For all the reasons that, that only Father fully knows and understands, and then we get to uh, have insight about when, as we lay hold on these verses of Scripture that help us understand how we have to, you know, that we're going to have to deal personally with the powers of darkness coming out against us. And then also understand the tools that they use, not only fleshly lust that we're against soul, but as other things that we've described. And so, um, you know, when we've got that insight, it helps us a little bit more within the framework of endurance, okay? So then look at the 70. Let's look at the 70 real quick in Luke 10, 17. 70, turn again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through our name, through, or for, through your name. And um, that, that is the reality of the interplay. However, there is many things that they are going to have to deal with within the framework of the opposition of the enemy. Would you just scroll on down so I can just see how much I've got there to get through? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so I try to move right along. Um, and I think I've already said this. I think those are just notes I had. Say it goes about as a roaring lion, 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9, seeking we may devour. You know, uh, once again, he's got teeth because he's not going to gum people to death. He's got teeth. Um, he, he can do what he, 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 he's very effective at what he wants to do and what he's allowed to do. Um, he's very devoted to his power of deception. He's very devoted to his power that he has been given um, uh, a right to function in by God, even to this day, of shutting down the anointing if he can shut it down, of stopping God's people if he can stop, against, stop them, of warring against the saints. He's warring against the saints, but there will be a day uh, in in uh, the seven year tribulation, and he'll war against the saints and prevail against them. Uh, right now, he wars against the saints, but he has no right to prevail against us. We win no much, no matter how much suffering, hardship, intensity we go through. Just stand. I don't care whether it's sickness, disease, doesn't matter. Pain, ministry, you know, vision, purpose, finances, whatever the case may be, stand. 
just stand okay uh, so let's look here at uh, the evil spiritual host okay and I want to break this down for you I promise to do this uh, so this is just an abbreviated form of this but uh, uh, what I'm going to do but it, it'll get you started okay for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but, but against principalities RK now this can you know that means beginnings but it also can refer to the organizational structure of Satan um, and that's why it's translated principality um, and that would be very similar to a military command uh, more than likely you could actually even imagine much of the military the whole art of war that's not something of God's kingdom but the whole art of war being something that belongs to a satanic kingdom and thus was unveiled and revealed beginning with Cain and, and, and all of its advancements all the way to um, our modern day war machine and military power okay and that that structure is very similar to what we would find within the framework of the devil and his angels and I've talked to you a little bit about it like with the prince of Persia the prince of Grisha um, etc and so uh, the next one would be authorities or which is the Greek word um, exousia and that really would be you know kind of in the framework of the attacking powers uh, of Satan and these aren't necessarily you know separate groups this can be really defining organization, defining function um, as well. So go on down here to the next slide. So this really is an important one. The rulers of, of the darkness of this world. And I want, I, want to just, I want to just stop there for just a minute and talk about the rulers of darkness of this world. Because what happened was during the days of Daniel, God gave Daniel a vision and insight concerning the structure of the rulers of the darkness of this world, which would include, obviously, Satan, who is head over all of these things, all of the angels that are with him and organized underneath him, like the Prince of Grecia, the Prince of Persia, okay? Um, and then uh, angels below that. And then, of course, demons, as we see demon spirits, and demon spirits having a certain amount of hierarchy, as we see when... Um, a demon is cast out and is, is, um, goes into uh, barren, empty places because demons want to inhabit something. They go into vo the void or empty places. They go and they get seven demons more wicked than themselves, more powerful than themselves. They go back to try to then establish a place where that they never have to leave this habitation of this person, or it could be even a nation. But... Um, you look at the vision that Daniel had and um, he showed us the structure of the governments of men and within the framework of showing us the structure of the governments of, of men he was showing us the spiritual power this these forces these dark forces the rulers of darkness of this world that were behind the governments of men beginning you know with Babylon Babylon the head of gold and then after that medial Persia and then what happens was God it's like God takes as it were um, a microscope and zooms in and focuses down on that so we can see more specifically about the dynamics of that how that operates and recognize oh well behind the, the, the kings of Persia and the government of Persia and Medes and the Persians was this prince of darkness this angel, angelic power who was under the authority of Satan now actually given the authority and the power and the structure of that government. And then that went all the way down. Then uh, following suit, as we've seen, the Prince of Grecia came. And then we can also know that after the Prince of Grecia came, then the Prince of Rome came, the Roman, the Eastern and Western divisions of Rome. It's a, it's a proper assumption because we see an order of it, then we know the next thing. Well, the next thing would be the same. We could just repeat it. That a Babylon, that there was a prince of Babylon. He was displaced by the prince of Media Persia. The Media Persia prince was displaced by the uh, prince of Grecia. The prince of Grecia is now bound, we know specifically, in hell because of the particular 
power and authority that he had. He's going to be, he's going to be, he will be loosed again. Um, I, I, maybe I've talked a little bit about that. I should have talked more about that. You can read about it in my book on the last two kingdoms. He'll be loosed again to be rule, ruling with and, uh, and over the Antichrist in a similar way to, uh, that is similar way to, that he ruled over and functioned with Alexander the Great. And so back to the, the sequence, then we could see that the prince of Rome, okay, displaced the prince of Grisha. And now we see that the last two, there's these interim governmental powers, which are an expression of these rulers of darkness of this world, are seen there within the framework of the eastern and western division of Roman Empire or the legs which are a, a wait for the feet. The feet won't be revealed and the ten toes won't be revealed until just before uh, the tribulation and then right into the tribulation as they give, their, they, they give their power over to the Antichrist. But we're still living in the, under the structure and the order uh, of that Greco-Roman uh, Greco power. And during the days of, of the Roman world, they conquered most of the world, but you would still have uh, enclaves of places of different cultures, like China and, and, and places like in, in Africa. However, that is changing, isn't it? You can see China becoming more influenced by, Greek, uh, uh, by the Western world, which is, a, is the Greek-Roman world, the Greco-Roman society and culture, which is, we understand that, is, is uh, under the design and dominion of a prince of that of Rome, uh, and, and that power then that culminated this this what we would refer to as a, uh, a Hellenized or a Greek and Roman world and Greek and Roman culture, which then we understand that as Western civilization, as Western society, and look at its influence. I've gone out into some of the most remote places of the world, and find people watching MTV seeing them dressing and, and acting and behaving just like the rest of the Western world, which once again is under these rulers of darkness of this world. It's speaking of a structure. And I just simply say, may refer to all of the angels under Satan's command. Uh, and, and that's what it appears to me. I can't tell you convincing, convincingly that that is the case, but I believe that that is indeed the case, Okay. Um, it make it only makes sense, and so that's that's pretty much where, as far as I'm going to take you, I'm going to tell you that the rulers of the darkness of this world refer to angels under Satan's command. So it's all of the structure. How many different princes are there uh, over the various different cultures of the world? How many of them are being displaced by an, an, angels of darkness that are greater and stronger and power more powerful than? them and then look at the various different expressions of culture under the framework of the western culture you got things that go on in france that are different from russia that are different from germany that are different from america that are different from the uk then within america you have different cultural structures of things that blind that belong to different groups like the gothic people and the homosexual people and all these various different groups um, you know, various different expressions of rebellion and, and drugs and alcohol, all under the framework of the rulers of the darkness of this world. So understand, take it, break it down like this. Understand, where can you detect the darkness of this world? You can detect it over here and here and here and alcohol and drugs and homosexuality and immorality and, 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 and nightclubbing and, and all the other things that go on. Well, then you say, okay, that's the darkness of this world. Well, behind that darkness are ruling powers. You get that? So that's why I break it down like this, okay? Um, and so I say also possibly understand the mode of operation of the satanic host in their ranks superior to men, okay? So hopefully the things that I've said now kind of reveal that to you. Okay, how much time do I got left? Huh? Yeah, I figured I was about down to the 10-minute call. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure I can get most of this done for you here. So I've already, meant, I, I've already mentioned just a little bit about the organization, um, you know, just, you know, seven, seven times or seven more wicked than itself. Or demon goes to get seven more 
uh, demons more wicked than himself and submits itself to those w demons that are more wicked than himself so that he can retain his position. Uh, then I've already talked to you about the uh, demon, uh, 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 the angels that come out of the bottomless pit that many refer to as demon locusts, but they are angels, okay? Demons aren't disembodied, no body. Uh, angels' body, okay? They're angels that come out of the uh, bottomless pit and they have a king over them. And that king is another angel who is called Apollyon, okay, uh, in the Greek uh, language. And so, of course, they have emissaries, and some of the emissaries that they use are men. And um, where Satan stirs up men, where uh, this particular one, it's Paul looks at the sorcerer who would turn uh, uh, um, Paul of Sergius away from the faith, and he calls him what? You child or son of the devil. And of all wickedness. Huh? You were in league with, he was a sorcerer. He was in league with the powers of darkness. He was in league with Satan. So Paul effectively dealt with him. He said, you're going to be blind now. I'm going to show you what power's like. Are you ready? You're blind now. And so you're not taking, you know, that's an authority we get to use against Satan, especially when they're trying to stop someone who um, would be saved. Uh, they're trying to hinder. They're not allowed to hinder anybody. Who They're not allowed to touch anybody's will. The will is off limits to satanic powers. That's powerful, you hear me? The will is off limits to satanic powers. God will have an, an authority unleashed uh, any time Satan tries to interfere with the will of men. Um, uh, once again, uh, demons are like birds. Steal the word. I mean, it, it, once again, you get another insight to see how they function and how they operate. And, um, you know, you see any dead carry on, you see the birds get right after it. You throw seed down, you're going to see birds swarming on, the, on that seed. Um, you know, you can begin to understand <coughs> certain things from these actions about the way demon powers um, function, the way they act, so that you can be prepared, not ignorant concerning Satan's device. You can be prepared to be able to deal with that. You can deal with it effectively in prayer before you ever start sowing seed. They that go weeping, bearing precious seed. Okay, that's speaking of intercession that precedes going out with the word of God to stop Satan from being able to swoop it up like a bunch of birds coming to get the seed that you've thrown out on the lawn. You're just not going to have grass grow. There's certain times of the year you plant seed for grass. I'm going to tell you right now, it just, you're not, it's not going to grow because it's going to be in the belly of the birds. And um, so, very, very important things to grab a hold of, just begin to think about and concern, consider, uh, especially within the framework of ministry. And there's more, of course, but let's go on here to Prince of the Power of the Atmosphere and just recognize that kind of authority and that kind of impact. Why We should arm ourselves with the reality, wait a minute, everything that saturates the motivation of men, everything that saturates our culture, Everything that saturates the mindset of humanity that is, doesn't know God, that are making decisions when the framework of what we would call secular world, whether it's academia or whether it's, you know, entertainment, it is literally influenced, not more than influenced, saturated because Satan is called the prince and the power of the very atmosphere and literally the air that we breathe, as it were. That kind of saturation, of course, that he doesn't have that kind of impact and power over us, or at least he shouldn't, because you and I are supposed to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to be surrounded by the glory of God, living in the glory of God, God in us and God with us, uh, filled up on the, uh, on the inside and saturated on the outside. But for the rest of the world, what does the Scripture say? The whole world, what? Lies in wickedness. The whole world lies under the power and the authority of Satan. And, that's what he, and so we're looking at people. They think they're making choices for themselves. They think they got insight. They think they know stuff. Literally, they are nothing more than lined up as more demons, more of the minions of Satan being played by the satanic power. And when we begin to get insight, then we begin to have more wisdom. And when the, with that wisdom, 
we can function in a greater authority in the Holy Ghost and quit playing pretend like your idea versus my idea. We're going to have a contest, see who wins. Are you kidding me? They're under the power of darkness. You have the authority to break off that yoke. And so I mean, one thing people got to start doing is they got to start telling people, you need to repent. There's an eternity that you're on your way to without God. You being played by the powers of darkness. And I have the authority right now to break that stronghold off of you, those lies off of you. And if we'll get more real about who we are, people are going to be more impatient by the reality of who God is. Important to get that. So Ephesians 2.2 2 tells us, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world. Understand it. Understand the darkness of this world, okay, that we referred to earlier, that, the, that Satan is ruler over. The course of this world, it's the current, the way that everything is moving. Organized, designed, defined, in every way, by the dominion and rule of Satan and his angels. Don't you make any mistake. Even some things are good. Oh, they're not a black witch, they're a white witch. Oh, they're not a bad sorcerer, they're a good sorcerer. Oh, it's not evil medicine, it's good medicine. Or whatever it comes down to, we just got to wait. Hold up, man. Where does this come from? How much compromises are we allowed to make? I know when you're, I know when you're in extreme pain and you can't seem to get that thing broken off of you and you in, wore out in a wrestling match with the Prince of Pain, a little bit of pain medication goes a long way. Okay, well, fine. Okay, whatever. Somebody said, man, I'm in so much pain I can't pray. I'm going to take a little bit of medication. Okay, well, whatever. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's not Papa's design. Can't make it all good. Hey, I praise God for medicine doctors when they, you know, stitch things up, fix broke, broken bones. You know, but everybody gets all excited about what they're doing in terms of working on the heart and working on other organs and, and basically leaving people in sickness and disease state. You know, I mean, it's like there will always be the, co you know, the conversation about quality of life. Okay, and reality of it is, is life is supposed to be highly, very, very full of quality. And, and if it's time for me to go home, then why should I continue to try to get this machine to work? Okay, but nonetheless, I'm not going to go into all of that. Every, each man to where he stands with respect to uh, all of those things that men have within the framework of the course of this world, in the framework of the, of, of the kingdom of darkness, and look at it. I mean, look at all the God-denying power of where things are at. we got folks right now saying, oh, they found a new type of homo sapien that was more than just, you know, the line of which the Neanderthal man, Neanderthal man uh, came from. Um, and, and reality of it is, is they can't prove for a second that it's just not another species of primate that's extinct. You know, and they make all these arguments that are just completely bogus, but it's always coming out of this realm of God denying we don't need God, we didn't come from God, God isn't there, we're here, and that's it. And when you detect that, you just got to recognize, wait a minute, that is nothing but demonized, possessed, I don't care if you find it in academia, medical science, I don't care where you find it in the world, it is simply, you know, war, wherever. It's simply from evil, from the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. The spirit, a demon, demon power. Understand that. It's a spirit, demon power that works in the children of disobedience. You could say that they're only oppressed. I'm going to tell you right now, they're more than oppressed. I'm going to tell you right now. They are children of the devil. That's more, they're the seed of the devil. That's more than oppressed. I mean, that's, that's almost like on a level of a different definition of possession. And we call it the old man. We call it the Adamic nature. We call it all different kinds of things. We know that every man needs to be saved because they're born in sin, shaped in iniquity. They are literally, Jesus called, in, 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 um, for remembering in John chapter 8, they even called the religious people of his day uh, children of the devil. Your father is the devil. Well, there's so much more to say here, and I'm so blessed that every one of you are willing to be a part of these lectures. I hope that you are um, enriched by them and that you'll take what you've learned and you allow yourself to give your more time to study.
because it goes so much deeper than I was able to give you. I just kind of hit the highlights, but it should take you, give you, set you on a good uh, path and course to be able to understand these things more perfectly. Blessings to you. Love you.